Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT and I'm here with the irrepressible Joe Worthington. What's up guys? Thanks for joining. The question is, Joe, it's uh, been put out there recently. Am I too fat to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Man, that's a bloody hard question. I'm and glad you're being self-reflective. That's, uh, let me just say that as the first thing. I think it's, it shows a lot of maturity <laughs> in you. It shows, you know what I mean, great growth. And I think, you know, you, we've been on this show for a long time now. People can see you're really coming into your own as an adult. And I just wanted to acknowledge you for that, JT, on behalf of the fans. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> nah, man, this is serious. Like, you, you can mock me, but uh, look. When being, I, o- being overweight and training. Being overweight and training because... The reason why I wanted to say this is I actually had someone say this to me. I'm not going to name them. That they are a, a, a bigger human. And they said, oh, I, I don't want to start training yet. I feel like I'm too I'm too big. I'm too heavy. I want to go lose weight, come back and start jujitsu." And I would say, no, that's wrong. The amount of people I know who have actually lost weight by doing jujitsu is actually a lot. Heaps. And I'm actually going to argue that being bigger is better for jujitsu. I'm going to say it. There are some very famous cases of very big blokes, big humans who do really well at jujitsu and actually didn't start as big humans, got bigger and did better. And, there, you know, we can have different uh, discussions about this, but I believe, no, you are not too fat to do jujitsu. That is bullshit. I think there should be no reason to stop you I'm starting, but let's dig into it. Because recently I did have a personal stab at me. Tell me more about that. Oh, man. So I put on some weight over Christmas intentionally. Yeah. Um, been lifting and eating. My mum said to me, you need to watch your weight. That's what she said to me. I said, what? My mum said you to me. You need to watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> she, said, she said, my mum said to me, what's your BMI? <laughs> I was like, what? Excuse me, nice. Miss Health and Fitness. She's nice like, she's like, I think, I think you, you need to check your BMI because I think you might be obese. What? That's fucking outrageous! I can't believe it. My mum said that I'm obese. I was like, that's cold, man. <laughs> I was washing the dishes at the time too. I thought I was being a good son, and she's decided it was time to stage a fucking intervention because I'm too fucking fat. So what did the chart say when you checked your BMI? Oh, my BMI is through the fucking roof. Like I'm obese. Oh, <laughs> hugely <laughs> obese. Yeah. But I said to her, the BMI, for those of you out there who don't know, the body mass index, and here in Australia, for whatever reason, we still give a care about it. It was like developed back in like the 30s or the 40s. And it, it was designed for us to try and work out if maybe someone's overweight. But I've been obese since I was... 14 years old. According like, to that chart. Yeah, according to the chart. It looks at your height, looks at your weight, weight. and then makes a kind of calculation based on It gives you a that. number, yeah. right? And so right now my number's out the door because I'm 178 centimetres tall and I'm 100 kilos. That's kind of ridiculous. I'm also overweight on the BMI. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, yeah. If you are carrying some muscle mass, it, it puts you into the overweight category. Yeah. So yeah, BMI is not a, not a tool to be given much weight much to. Credit. No. <laughs> much weight. Very good. Um, but <laughs> um, um, no, but think that about hurt this. when your mum said that, it or were you just like, bit, no, mum? I got a bit outraged because I was like, "Who the fuck are you to tell me about fitness? Like, I dedicated my whole life to this thing. Like, my weight gain has been very intentional. There's a reason why I've been eating steak every day, mum. I'm not on the carnivore diet. I'm trying to get dragged, mum. Just give me three hundred and fifty dollars for the new Gordon Ryan DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I need more supplements. <laughs> fuck, mum." <laughs> meatloaf I, it's like one of those things that she it when you overcook my steak <laughs> <laughs> i cook my own steak thank you very much but it's one of those things that uh it's a misconception and look if you are wait what's there, a misconception it's a misconception that like for example there are people out there who are maybe carrying a little bit of weight but it doesn't mean they're like very unhealthy do you know what I mean? No, because yeah. being maybe a bigger person they doesn't don't necessarily fit mean. the mold of, oh, they don't have abs or, yo, their arms aren't big or whatever. But maybe they're very active, yeah. you know, and maybe for whatever reason, whether it's a dietary thing, various com- um, uh, elements combining for them to carry a bit more body fat, it doesn't mean that they're super unhealthy. But the question is this idea that, 
oh, I'm too anything to do jiu-jitsu. Oh, I'm too fat. Now, I'm going to list the guys. So there's a very famous competitor called Big Mac. And uh, he actually did judo too. He was a cannonball of a human. You could not take him down. And man, he once he takes you down, it's kind of over with. Also, Andre Vela, who was actually an alliance guy for a period of time, started as a middleweight and worked his way up to heavyweight. My and, guy. And <laughs> yeah, dude, just ate his way up. I'm not saying he's the healthiest guy, but he was able to use his jiu-jitsu and his size to his advantage. Also, RIP, Orlando Sanchez. Big guy. Big guy, right? Yep. And he was really able to use that to his advantage as a grappler. Developed a style around it. Yeah, right. And then, you know, there's also the biggest guy in judo is a guy named Ricardo Blas Jr. And I think he's 185 kilos. Oh God. Two, almost 200 kilos. Awful. Colossal. Colossal, right? And I'm not saying, oh, that's healthy, but it's not stopping him from being a world-class judo guy right and i think the thing is we often talk ourselves out of stuff because we feel self-conscious and my mum giving me a hard time actually made me feel self-conscious right i was like fuck you know i love my mum she's my favorite person in the whole world also i love my lovely uh partner ola you're my second favorite person in the world um <laughs> but you know think think this guys like just, I know my mum doesn't know anything about fitness and she's just trying to be health concerned. But even though I know I'm not obese, my mum saying that to me, it made my heart shrink a bit. Yeah, right. Got it made you. me feel shit inside. Yeah. So I can't even imagine what it must be like for someone who is on the heavier side and and, and sees jujitsu, wants to try it. And, you know, someone might go, oh, you know, she might, you might want to get fit first. That's bullshit. I, I think that's absolute bullshit. If you're thinking about starting jujitsu, just fucking do it because being bigger is better. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I might push back on the being bigger is better piece. I think that's contextual, right? Because you're not that big, Joey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, continue. But um, <laughs> I won't even give that any credit uh, by responding. <laughs> no comeback. <laughs> but the the thing is, like, obviously, and this is not something I understand because I've not been in that place. But if you are carrying excess body weight, if you are overweight. Yeah, jiu-jitsu is going to be confronting because it's it's a huge amount of physical contact. It is. Right? You're wearing, if it's, particularly if you're wearing a rash guard. Like, he's pretty good, but rash guard can't hide anything behind a rash guard. Sure. People are going to see, you know, and maybe that for some people is, uh, I'm sure that is showing themselves to a degree that perhaps they, they don't do in a lot of other things in life. Then there's also the contact thing, right? You're touching people, you're lying on people, they're lying on you. There's like, And, and all of that is something I think that the individual has to deal with themselves like in your own psychology you have to get cool with that um you know as a as a person who has trained with overweight training partners it's not a concern for me no. right i don't i don't judge based on you know like if i see a big person someone's a lot bigger than me and they're carrying excess body weight i think okay i'm not going to get caught underneath that you don't need right? that side control but there's no judgment in terms of wow look man you're overweight or whatever it's like hey we're all here to do jujitsu i um i remember when i was a I think when I was a blue belt, we had a, um, this is back in the days when there was like four black belts in the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there was a, uh, a black belt that turned up at our gym. He was from Brazil. And the guy was 160 kilos. Whoa. And like he was, he was just a bubble. Yes. He was extremely overweight. Yeah. You know, and underneath that weight, there would have been some, there was muscle oh, mass. He oh, was strong. Sure. But he just played this, style. he just played this like, I think I, I don't remember how, but I had him. I had him in my attempted closed guard, but I couldn't close my legs. Sure. So my legs were just around his waist, and I just—he was just smiling the whole time, <laughs> and he just—he just smiled, grabbed my leg, put it here, and then just passed, and then just like squashed me, and then mounted me and choked me out. Yeah. And he just had this big guy jujitsu that I—that was unbeatable to me. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, whatever. Like it, it he had developed a style that suited him, mm. and I'm I'm guessing that's kind of what you're pointing to is that like. It helped, like in many ways, if you can learn how to use your size, it becomes a huge advantage, yeah. right? Not necessarily saying that you should, right? That's a separate discussion. Um, but the beauty of that was, is that this guy was a black belt. He was elite at jujitsu. He was also extremely overweight. Sure. And he had a game that worked really well for him. And so in that regard, there's no specific body type that's best for jits. No. Right? You, so wherever you're at, Mate, the, the, the game is open to you if you, if you want to play it. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing I think 
this is what I want to speak to more, is that if, for example, um, somebody is uh, it has excess body weight, whether that be muscle or fat, doesn't matter, right? Because we see some pretty heavily muscled humans struggling to move themselves, right? Because it's just muscle for muscle's sake. And when you put that person on their back and you say, hey, get up off the ground, it's, it's not easy to do. That said, if you said to them, hey, you're going to go run 10 kilometers, they could injure themselves, right? Even if they had the will to do it and they just really tried to push through. But if you come to jiu-jitsu and do some technical stand-ups and learn to do some rolls and some movements, that's very accessible to anybody, whether you're really small or really big. There's, that you're not likely to injure yourself doing these controlled movements. Now, it does get a little bit different when you have someone else trying to yank on your arm or do whatever else. But what I have discovered, being slightly bigger than I once was, it's actually easier being heavier. I don't have to move as much if I choose not to. Whereas in pretty much every other sport, the requirement is high skill requires lots of movement. Whereas because jiu-jitsu is a control game, um, whether it's gi or no gi, if you're kind of a bit bigger, you can use that to your advantage and use it to control your partner. And there's, there, there is something to that. And the reason why I say this is this allows somebody who maybe before would never consider doing athletics or doing combat sports or anything like that, uh, uh, it allows them to get their foot in the door to start doing activity and doing these things, which may result in a bunch of weight loss. Because we actually had some back in the day, so um, I can't remember everyone's name, but a good friend of ours, friend of the program, Chris McEwen, um, trains down at DC Jiu-Jitsu in Geelong. I think it was him and his metal band heads joined um, Jiu-Jitsu. And I think Chris had already been doing it for a couple of years. He was a blue belt at the time. Um, he's a black belt now, shout out. Um, good man, he's very in touch with us. Legend. Yeah, great guy, um, love him. A bunch of guys in his band started losing weight just because they're doing jiu-jitsu. They were still drinking. They were still like, metalheads. They were still eating junk food. But because they'd started doing jiu-jitsu, this activity and this movement actually started to change them. And they were, they were really stoked on that. And I think they had never expected that side of things. So I think what is awesome about jiu-jitsu is it doesn't matter whether you're thick, thin, small, big, your ability to find out what works for you will determine your success in the art. And that's, that's the real value. So I'm going to say, no, there's no such thing as, oh, I'm too big for jujitsu. I think that's nonsense. And, uh, but I see other people doing this where they go, yeah, man, I want to start, but uh, I'm just going to, just going to go, you know, I'm going to start doing lifting a bit of weights before I, uh, you know, and then they never do that either. People who are in good shape say that, right? Yeah. They come up with an excuse to not start To now. not start because there's a bit of a fear factor, right? Because you're like, whoa, this looks hectic. Like, whoa, these guys are like throwing each other on the floor. And I mean, from the outsider's perspective, jiu-jitsu is so alien. And um, <laughs> uh, more recently, an old school friend of mine who I got to see at a bit of a reunion, he was like, oh, is there like a... <laughs> he was joking around. He's like, is there like a a version of jiu-jitsu which is for like fat out of shape weak guys i was like yeah bro it's called krav maga <laughs> but no he's actually his brother does krav maga that's why i hit him with that sledge but whatever um but um <laughs> but essentially he i was like dude anyone could do jiu-jitsu stop making excuses stop running marathons like just jump in and find out and if you try it and you don't like it that's fine no money back guarantee but you should fucking try it. I don't, I don't care who you are. And so when I hear someone saying, oh, X, Y, and Z reason, I can't do this, that's bullshit. It's not true. It might be the thing that changes your life and you don't know it. That's why I'm such a big advocate for this. Big and advocate. Big, literally. And if you're out there and you're feeling self-conscious, because that's the thing, I, it's weird. Instagram has got us all fucked up. You know, whether you're a woman or a man. Either, oh, my tits aren't big enough. That's what I think. Don't worry about the ladies. Um, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Fucking liver king. You know, body dysmorphia. It's fucking real. We would talk to Andrew Locke, right? He's one of the biggest humans you ever met. And he thinks he's small. Yeah, wakes up every day, thinks he's small. Small. I've just got to get bigger. 
his traps are bigger than my head. <laughs> like his traps are massive. And it's crazy what society does to us about feeling bad about ourselves, feeling insufficient and all these things which are just limiting nonsense. And you've got to jump in to swim. So if it doesn't matter where you're at right now, whether you're out of shape, you've got extra kilos on, I think you should go and try jiu-jitsu. Or if you've got a friend who you know is a bit out of shape and you already do jiu-jitsu, get him there, force him there. Because it could just be such a beneficial thing to not only their physical health, but their mental health. Absolutely. Yeah, so I've, um, I'm thinking back to a couple of people I've trained, uh, not in jiu-jitsu, but in the gym over the years who are, who are carrying a lot of extra weight. And something that is, that is um, common amongst people who are carrying a lot of extra body weight is they're very strong. Because, oh, yeah. they're, because they are carrying extra load all the time. Yeah. And so what you find is that the, the joints are often quite robust mm. and they, they have good muscle mass. You, you don't see it, right? If, the person's got, if you've got a bit of body fat, that covers, right, from, from outside view, Camel but the flesh. muscle's there. And so I think what's really cool about that is that these people already have a base of strength. Yes. Right? And, of course, they want to drop the weight, but the, but the base of strength is there. Now, if I'm, if I'm looking at that person and I'm, and I'm, you know, and we're trying to advise and I'm trying to advise on what I think the best, the best sort of outcome is like, where do you want to be? Like that black belt that I spoke about, I don't think, you know, I wouldn't advise anyone to get to that place, no. right? If you, if you were like, well, what should I do? It's like, well, yeah, you don't want to be carrying huge amounts of body fat. It is unhealthy, right? It is placing, it is placing extra load on your body and that's extra load on your organs. You know, it, it's not good for your health. But that shouldn't limit the activity that you do, right? And as JT said, jiu-jitsu could become the catalyst that helps you establish a healthier lifestyle. If we're looking at the kind of body that moves well on the mats, yeah, you don't want to be impeded by having extra mass on you necessarily, right? You want to have like, I don't know, for a better term, like functional mass. You want to be mm. carrying enough muscle and you want to be able to move and that kind of thing. So I definitely think like, yeah, if you're carrying a lot of body fat, it is good to try and get rid of some so that you can perform better. You can move more. You can access more positions. Um, but I think the, the main takeaway of, the, of what we're saying is that like that shouldn't be the thing that prohibits you from engaging in the art. Yeah, I, I think this concept of I'm going to go do a totally unrelated thing to get better for the main thing is bullshit. And we do it all the time. It's just another form of procrastination, right? Like, like business. Oh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do my emails, but first I need to, I'll, I'm going to get that new software that reorganizes your emails so it'll be easier when I finally do them. And then you waste two hours looking at plans for the better email organization technology. It's all bullshit. Like really taking that step unlocks so much forward momentum in many other ways. I've seen it over and over again with people coming into just a conventional gym to do anything. Wouldn't matter if it was weight loss, get stronger, anything. The fact the person walked through the door and said, hey, I'm here to try and do this thing is massive. And just taking the step. There's so much courage and there's so much value in that that, you know, if even if you're someone now who does jiu-jitsu and you, you are a, a big human – taking the steps to improve your conditioning or improve your physical fitness, that's, that's brave. That's bold. It's far easier to do that if you are not carrying an extra 30 or 40 kilos. Everything's easier, but it's not about easy. Jiu-jitsu is not easy. Nothing in life, if it's outside your comfort zone, is easy. But making the decision and taking the step is huge. So really what I want to do is just encourage people. Like just encourage people as much as possible to take that step to either start jiu-jitsu or make that step towards being healthier or being more active. No excuses for not. That's what I'd say. Should we, um, is it worth diving into like, so, you know, if someone's listening and they are carrying extra weight and they want to get rid of it and they're like, yeah, you know, they want to, they want to start to move towards uh, shifting some of it. Should we maybe give some practical kind of measures from a nutrition point of view and stuff like that or... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go more on an activity perspective because yep. uh, I was really shocked. I I was doing research for um, I gave this talk to a bunch of corporates and I wanted to go in there and tell them y'all need to work out three times a week, blah blah blah. And then I was reading these studies about incidental activity, 
And it actually showed that people who walked a certain amount every day and were more active every single day uh, across the board were healthier than people who worked out three times a week and didn't do that. Right. You know, people who, oh, I go to the gym and I work out, but then I sit in my car. Yeah. And I sit at home and I, they didn't do much. And so it was actually really shocking to me that um, the two major groups were the people who did the workouts and then the people who didn't do the workouts but were overall more active. Even though it showed the people who were more active were not fitter, like they, you know, their resting heart rate wasn't as low and they weren't as strong, they were just as healthy, if not healthier, and they were happier. And so my, I was like, oh, wow, that really kind of – that turned my mind around because I've always been kind of workout focused. And that's when I started to do a lot more walking this couple of years ago. And so I am a huge advocate for people walking. And it sounds – it sounds lame because it's not sexy. It's not like, oh, just did my, just did my five k walk around my block. No one gives a shit. But it's a big it's, fucking block. It's a big block. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of whether you're walking the dog or anything like yeah. that, I, I think for health, um, assigning time every day to just make yourself go walk, whether you listen to a podcast or you just listen to music or you don't listen to anything, you just go for a walk. That is one of the best things you can do to change the health balance. Yeah, it's it's been yeah, no, I I agree. It's been shown to burn more calories than a workout. Yeah, yeah, in many ways, and that's a real simple one that anyone can do. Yeah. And if you are like, hey, well, I'm already doing the workouts and I'm doing jujitsu, but I'm still carrying a bit of extra body weight, add some walks in, and it really does make a huge effect. Mm. I yeah, I remember Luke. You were saying before Luke Tullock, he's been really he's really big on that. Yeah. And I think he's religious about getting ten, fifteen thousand steps a day. Yep. And he's just like, no, nah, that is like a non-negotiable for me. Yeah, and if you don't, and I'm not really into a whole bunch of wearables, but I know it even worked for my parents who are not really, uh, they're not competitive people. But when my mum and dad actually each got a Fitbit, they're like, yo, where's your steps today? <laughs> yeah. and my dad was walking around the freaking living room. Gamifies it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just because it, it just brings it to your attention. Yeah. And if you're not thinking about it, it it's not going to change. And, you know, like uh, James Smith PT, you know, he's always banging on about, you know, calorie... Mm -hmm. Calorie balance, yep. you know, like and it is like... They love the, the... NEAT is another term that gets used for this, right? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Right. Which is like activity that you do that's not exercise as such, mm. but contributes towards you burning calories. Like I, I, I don't know if you do this, but I always love to get like a real sweet park right next to the, the spot. But I hate parking in stacked parking lots. Right. I hate it. Like, it, I don't know. Maybe I've watched too many movies. But I just have these nightmare scenarios of like parking, you know, in the Westfield and it all crumbling down and us all being crushed. Loses to death. the ticket when he's at the smoothie shop and then he's like, fuck, I lost the ticket. No. <laughs> I can't handle it. And, and so it, it's always been a bit of a contention uh, between myself and my partner, Ola. She's like, are you going to park 5Ks away and then we have to walk all the way to the restaurant and then I'm sweaty? And then, uh, you know, like, I'm like, babe, it's good for us. We need to walk. <laughs> so as much as I love to get that real sweet spot right next to wherever, I also will park a couple blocks away to get a very low key, easy park and walk it in. That's a real simple measure. Yeah. And you just got to add an extra 15 minutes to the thing, but it's actually not stressful. Yeah. You know, it's easy to factor in. A really good way to use that one, if you uh, if you commute to work every day and you take the bus or the train, is to just get off a stop earlier. Mm. And you just get off a stop earlier and you have whatever it is, 10, 15, 20-minute walk, bam, that gets you like heaps of extra steps in without ever having to do much. And I mean, look, I, I'm, I don't – it's been something I've been thinking about more in recent years because I don't – I used to get a huge amount of steps because I was coaching yes. all fucking day down here on the gym floor. Mm. And then the, when, I, when I moved away from full-time coaching, all of a sudden I'm just sitting at a desk all day, Yeah. right? And I realized, wow, I'm actually just not getting any activity that's not specifically my training session. Mm. Um, so I've been thinking about this and I've been playing around with walking. I still haven't found a consistent way to do it that, I, that works for me, right? Um, but it's, it's really nice. Like yeah. it's really nice to go for a walk. Yeah. Think about how busy you are, how much shit you got going through your head. Well, it's just like to go for 20, 30 minutes, whatever, take a walk. It's like, it's meditative. I find it. Yeah. I, no, I'm, I'm totally with that. I am someone who struggles with meditation, but I find just 
walking and observing nature and stuff like that. Even if I'm in the heart of the city, yeah, just just stuff like that helps to alleviate the pressure on your mind, um, and it also lowers your blood pressure. So if you're someone who struggles with blood pressure, walking is is great for that. Um, the other thing which I think is probably um, neglected around um, fat loss, weight loss, is the sleep piece. And, you know, it's because sleep regulates um, your hormones and ghrelin is the major hormone which helps regulate, like, satiety and, like, feeling full. And if you're really tired all the time, ghrelin is smashed out the door. Your body doesn't produce it in the same way or it, it misproduces it, I should say. So then you don't know when you're full and that's where you have a tendency to just eat too much food. Now, as somebody who's been trying to eat too much food for the last um, 12 weeks... I know all the wrong ways to do this. I know that my full mechanism kicks in in about 15 minutes. So if I'm trying to maximize calories, I'm just like, no, 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 just as much as I can. I turn into that demon. Before, you, before the mechanism. Yeah, because I know at 15 I'm minutes. Now. Yeah, so it's got to be max calories. And, um, and that's terrible. That's the worst. That's a bad habit. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's also a necessary part of trying to put on mass. Yeah. Which is, you know, a separate discussion, but it's totally the reality separate. of it. So the other side on that, and it, I've referenced Use this it. before, is, is the mindfulness thing. So it, this struck me. This is something that made me respect Joe Worthington. And it, you know, they're few and far between, but they're, they're strong. How about that? An admission is coming, guys. We strap in. We, um, was when um, JB's was around at the old joint, the yeah. original spot, the motor mechanic spot. Yeah. And we were just connecting and I was just coming by to check it out. We're doing a bit of workout, hang out, talk some stuff. This is before Bulletproof, guys. And I had to rush to go back to the airport to go to Melbourne. And Joe said, oh, there's a tie joint down here. We should, we should go down here. And I was like, all right. And then we sat down and I was like, oh, wait, we need to get in and get out. And Joe's like, no, man, just... Wait, we got our food. It was delicious, amazing. And I was like ready to really eat it. And Joe's like, no, just wait a second. We're just going to take a second. We're just going to appreciate what's in front of us. We're going to think about it. Gonna smell it. And it wasn't a prayer. It was interesting. It wasn't a meditation, but it was like a, just a, a mindfulness exercise in a way of just like, here's this food. How did it come to be here? The chicken that died to give us the meat sauce you know you kind of talked it through and it slowed me down Farmer a little bit pick the vegetables yeah the rice everything right yeah. and we sat there and, and it was an appreciation thing and by being slower and more mindful i actually got fuller <laughs> it slowed me down You're like i'm not doing that fucking shit again <laughs> <laughs> never again but it was it was cool and i was like wow that was kind of and it did it took me down a notch anyway i got to the airport on time it's not a problem but I remember in that moment going, that was pretty powerful, man. That was, that was insightful. That's not something I would do. And I went, this guy knows some stuff. Mm. So I, I took that on board. And I think the idea of being slower and more mindful is another good way to have a better relationship with food. Not just staring at a screen, just chucking it in your face. Yeah, man. The, yeah, like I, 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 you know, admittedly, I haven't maintained that ever since then, right? It's something I still try and do you know, when it comes to my mind. But um, as we get busier, it's easy just to rush through meals. It's easy to sit on your phone while you're at the cafe and, and that's the absolute worst thing you can do, right? Because you just, there's no mechanism of, you're not acknowledging the food, there's no pre-digestion occurring and you're, the science shows that if you are distracted while you're eating, you will, you will overeat. Yeah. yeah, you know. So one of the simplest measures on that front is, yeah, take that time to check in. Maybe it's like you take three deep breaths before your meal or like it doesn't have to be, as in depth as what we just described, even though that was like probably like 30 to 45 seconds, right? Yeah, it so was. Like just sit here yeah. and look at it and just think about the food for a sec. Mm. Um, but the other thing is chewing more. Yes. Right? And they say like, if you just chew 50 times with every mouthful, it fucking slows you down. Man, it's a lot. That's and why improves your digestion. Look at Joe's jaw. That is a guy who, <laughs> look at those very developed jaw muscles. It's, it's a bit of chewing Fuck Jason Priestley, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me, 90210? You bloody leather monkey, huh? But anyway, to bring it back full circle, yeah, jits is for everyone, you know? And if you're in a position where you're like, I'm not happy with where my health is at, then you should do something about it. You know, you should, you should take some of these measures and you could, you know, start training, be mindful of your eating. But don't let that hold you back from doing jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is for everyone. And 
you know, you will evolve throughout the game and it's kind of unrealistic to think that I will get healthy and then I will start this thing and then I'll be healthy forever. Your health is going to shift. The, you know, your body's going to shift as you go through different periods in life, more training, less training, whatever, yeah. kids, family, all that stuff. So just get into it and then let that be the catalyst for you to establish better habits. Definitely. And, and being around a community of people who care about something and care about each other is really powerful as a catalyst. And I believe BJJ as a community is the best community you can be part of. So getting yourself in and around that, um, it can do wonderful things. Guys, thank you. If you want help with your training, you know the Bulletproof for BJJ app has you covered. You can download it right now from the App Store, Google or Apple. You can start training for free. Strength, mobility. We've got an easy tracking system. You can journal your training, including your jiu-jitsu, and you can start to see the patterns between your jiu-jitsu and your strength training and your stretching. Um, go get on it now. You'll see JT and I on the inside. If you've got any questions, you can come straight at us. And uh, yeah, get training. Thank you.